Morning gents, um, today is a pretty special day, I've got the UK Wet Shaving Society combination of soap and aftershave to try today from James OSP. Um, these are little beauties here, as you can see. And so yeah, that's those. Um, wife got me these as a birthday present and been something I've been saying to her quite fancy for a while now and uh, yeah so she went ahead and got it for me very nice for indeed um, James duly sent it out with a nice little note uh, in the pot or in the box even to sort of say thank you for the order very nice little touch really don't see that much um, anyway I'm rambling so the soap itself I must admit I have had a sneaky smell of soap um, I had to because it was just present in the box um, and I wanted to smell it, so, but the aftershave I haven't in any way, shape or form. Mm, yeah, so OSP, upside down, there we go. Nice little pot of soap there. Very fresh smelling. Um, now, I, I will admit I'm not normally a lavender fan. Um, but this is tamed quite nicely with the rosemary. I think it's probably sage in there. Certainly lots of herbs and the thing that strikes me quite quickly is the menthol presence as you're taking a sort of nice deep inhale you get that cold Almost sort of tingly sensation at the back of the nose Very nice indeed. So yeah, so initial scent thoughts there. It's fantastic. Um, my only other real experience of a lavender scented soap is Tobs um, Nice enough, a little bit sweet, artificial in comparison. Yeah, so it's, it's it's one dimensional as well. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing if you like just a sort of a fairly artificial smelling lavender scent, then that will be perfect for you. Um, so yeah, onto today's shave. I've already prepared with my hot towel. Um, today's shave will use obviously the OSP soap. My Razor Rock Bazooka with a, a fresh sharp blade. Um, very nice blade, really nice razor as well. Heavy, heavy handle, and I like it a lot. And uh, my shaving ring bowl, very nice little bowl there, custom made, uh, number 18 of 30. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, probably not. Uh, from the Biddeford Pottery, um, yeah, very nice little bowl, and uh, obviously. Like so, sharp blades, and uh, the OSP aftershave. I'll get my initial scent thoughts on that once I've had the shave. So, oh, obviously, uh, one thing I missed is my Cadman brush, the 26mm silver tip knot L7 handle, and this this one is my dad's, or the brush I had made for my dad, um, with his little signature on the disc there. So yeah, nice little piece there. It's been soaking for a good few minutes now, just to get the bristles nice and uh, well, ready, really. Um, I've given it a good squeeze and a, and a little shake to knock out some of the, the moisture. So yeah, and just give it a bit of a, a load in the tips. I don't want to lose sort of the moisture, so I will hold the bowl like so. And I like to load the tips of these brushes more than sort of get it deep in, um, probably more so just so I don't really damage the knot. Um, no real reason other than that. Um, I've got to say to James, uh, a nice sized tub to load from. Um, it's wide. There's, there's enough depth in there so as I'm not going to overspill um, any lather sort of all over the floor or wherever. Um, so it's, it's loading nicely into the brush. Um, give it a few more seconds if I, I want to create a fairly heavy load into the bowl. I should just back do it so you can see it. The brush is tearing up the soap nicely. Um, I think that should probably do the trick. Loaded nicely into the tips of the brush. And uh, like I say, empty bowl, no water, I'm just start, starting to work the lather from the brush 
into well, what is a, a very thick clean lather. Now I notice with these brushes they hold a lot of lather because um, they are monstrous 26mm knots. Uh, it's 50mm loft for anyone who's interested. Um, creates a lovely, it's a lovely face lathering technique to this brush. Uh, you can see I'm starting to build a fairly thick lather. It's as dense as you like. I mean, you're kind of probably not going to pick it up very well. The lighting levels in here are pretty poor, but there is no bubbles in there, none at all. Um, so I'm going to start adding some water in a moment. I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to put the light on. I'm going to put the light on, chaps. See if it makes a difference. There we go. Might might get something a bit better, maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, add a few drops of water, literally just a few drops, and start whipping that up again. So the grooves in the bowl do help build a nice lather, I notice. Um, better than an old plain bowl. Is it necessary? Probably not. You can build a decent bowl lather in an old cereal bowl. In fact, that's what I did for quite some time, to be honest. Um, even with James's sample soaps, which I was lucky enough to try before he actually uh, made OSP a thing and, and, and got his soaps on the market. In fact, here we go, look at this. This is coming along nice in the brush. Very thick, very thick lather. And we do a bit more water. So, a few more drops. It's been an eventful few days, really, isn't it? Um, with the whole political situation. Uh, Brexit. I'm not going to waffle too much about it. It's, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Remains to be seen. So, a little bit of a pun there I just uh, noticed. Anyway, building nicely. You may notice I'm wearing an Iron Maiden t shirt, Live After Death. It was a brilliant tour of that in 2000 and, uh, 2008. Um, this was at the Twickenham Stadium. I got this one sat in the north stand, about as far away from the stage as you could get. And uh, brilliant night, brilliant, absolutely brilliant night. I was slightly gutted during the main set because uh, there was one song I wanted them to play, which was Hello Be Thy Name. Um, and for anyone else who may have been there, you'll know that it was one of the encore tracks. And I um, kind of lost my shit when that happened. Um, I, I was very excited. Pretty much nearly fell out of the north stand um, and nearly went over the shoulders of the guy in front of me. So, yeah. Um, anyway, enough about music and stuff. Let's add a bit more moisture to this lather. It's very thick in the brush and it's a very thirsty soap, um, which I find a lot of tallow soaps can be. I'm going to add a bit more water for time saving. Uh, so, this is my first attempt at lathering this particular soap. I did obviously have great success with James's samples that he sent out pre-production. Um, and again, I do remember those being quite thirsty uh, from my initial reviews. I did read my initial review back to myself just so I can familiarise myself with the base behaviour again. Um, so I thought, well, it's, it's better than going in blind, if you will. There we go, it's starting to whip up a nice, a real nice thick leather. And that's... Holding peaks, it's probably not far off ready now. It's starting to spill out the bowl. Interestingly, well, interestingly, uh, it may be interesting to you, it may not be. Uh, I'm using Avnish's lathering method to some degree. Um, instead of just sort of circle whipping the lather, I do a side to side motion in the bowl, which apparently, and I, I, I can see the logic, it kind of protects the bristles of the brush quite nicely from the constant turning effect and uh, helps to beat some of the air out I think in the lather that you may or may not introduce anyway yeah that's 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 a great lather coming on there look at that it's holding its peaks just about beautiful interestingly the scent is there I can the lavender is quite muted now, um, which for me personally is uh, probably a good thing and I'm not a huge lavender fan. Um, but the herbs are very prominent and I like that. 
Um, there's another soap I use from uh, Faena called Mastic Tree, and, and the herby nature of that is uh, is wonderful. And this is clearly going to follow suit. Look at that lovely, lovely lather there, nice and thick. So let's uh, let's see how this goes on. So yeah. Mmm. Scent on the face is nice. It's fresh. It's like being in the garden really. I suppose that was the point of the profile. Now the menthol is there. You can feel the cooling effect ever so slightly. It's it's, it's obviously no Parasso, and I don't think it was intended to be in as much as the menthol was obvious. Uh, I think this was just like a, a little sort of acknowledgement, a little nod to the summertime, just to give it a little something to take it to the fresh side. So, just rinse the razor off to warm up the head, and I'm just going to perform a bit of a basic three-pass shave today. Oh yeah. Nice amount of glide there, as I do recall. From the test samples. So yeah. Very good. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm very much liking that. Now, plenty of glide there on the face and plenty of cushion. Blade exposure on this is quite, I don't know if they're going to pick it up, probably not very well, but quite a bit of blade exposure on this head. Um, now it's not particularly even either, I've noticed on this razor, but I use that to my advantage. Um, so I will tend to switch to the lesser exposure side on the clean up passes. Um, but for general shaving, it's not a problem at all. I don't really notice it. So, yeah, that's, that's great. Plenty of cushion, plenty of glide, absolutely no problems there at all on the first pass. Just give the face a bit of a wipe down just so I can see. Feels great. That's uh, it's a lovely scent, lovely and fresh, and uh, ideal for summer. It's it, it, it it's like being in a garden, I suppose. If so. and, and as I said, it's the scent profile. I think it's more sort of garden herbs, herb garden, something like that. I've said it a bit like I'm on there. There's a catchphrase where you're just throwing out random phrases now. But yeah, the scent is fantastic. Glide is brilliant. Lather is rich and plenty of cushion and perfect I would imagine for a straight razor as well which I will get around to ordering from Drew at some point payday then I'll have to uh, James I'll have to order one of your straps as well because obviously I'll need one of those as a proper straight as opposed to a shave it Oh yeah, on the second application of the ladder, the menthol is more obvious. Um, but then again, I find the same with, with the Parasso and uh, the sample of Sterling Glacial that I tried from Avenich. That was, again, immediately more obvious on the second application. The menthol, and that's, that's a nice touch. It's going to really bode well for the summer or three days of it that are yet to come. So uh, yeah, 
the second pass is uh, mostly against, well, across the grain on my neck. I've got quite funky growth directions below the jawline on this side, so I just want to make the most of it, otherwise I'll be spending all morning changing direction with the razor. You know, I appear to have caught myself on the Adam's apple, but yeah, it happens. Yeah, no irritation there at all. Just ample protection from the blade. More than ample protection, should I say. Um, some soaps leave you feeling a bit dry with the blade applied to the face. Not this one. Um, there's very few that actually leave me with true confidence. And uh, incidentally, they're both both brands are English artisans. I say both. Three. Mm, a few more nicks. Just uh, borrow the course for me with a new blade, particularly sharp ones like this sharp, um, they bite, but yeah. No real drama, just a little nick, it happens, Nick nicked himself. Anyway, fantastic there. Absolutely fantastic so I'm loving the scent and I said ample ample glide I'm just gonna try and pull some of the leather out of the brush because it's very 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 lovely leather just want you to see that there and uh, as I apply the third pass is coat pop a bit into the tips Mm. Again, the menthol really coming through on the third pass, or on the third application, should I say. So the third pass is generally against the grain and this is where I'll probably end up looking like a scene from Dexter. Which if you've never seen Dexter, I urge you to watch it. It's fantastic. Some, uh, what do you call it? Psychological criminal drama. Anyway, he's a blood spatter analyst for the Miami PD. Um, but he's also a serial killer. Um, which makes for a very interesting programme. Very good. Is it as good as this soap? Ooh, that is quite a nick, isn't it? Anyway, I digress. The soap itself is brilliant. These nicks aren't from the soap at all. This is me and the blade. The soap is doing a fantastic job. Glide is wonderful. Go 
Thank you, Cushion. And a wonderful scent. And let's face it, a scent is important. Not the most important aspect of a scent for me. Um, but let's face it, if it's a nice scent, you're going to want to use it. If it's a poor scent, it's going to sit in a drawer, not get used. So, yeah. A little bit of blood from the uh, from the shave today, which is unusual for me, I must say. Um, probably because I'm filming. Most of the time I can get away with a good three-pass shave and zero blood. But, uh, has it happened? Not today. Oh well, it happens. Anyway, back to the soap. Fantastic. Mmm, yes. A lovely scent. Fantastic glide. Confidence throughout with the cushion as well. And, uh, yeah. Superb. Um, Post-shave. I don't feel any immediate dryness or tightness with some soaps, um, particularly like the Wilkinson Saw Blue Bowl. I can feel quite a bit drying from that, and uh, almost immediately. But this one, no. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to find fairly quickly in my bag of goodies. It's not in my bag of goodies, I don't think. My, um... No, it's not. I wonder where that could be. My Helen block. It's around here somewhere. Not in that bag of goodies either. And it's not on the windowsill. So what we'll do is we'll have a sip of coffee instead. It's not up there. Is it in here? It's not in there. I wonder, Alan Block, where could you be? Anyway, I thought I'd give the Alan Block a try in the uh, event of blood. I'll come back shortly with the Alan Block and we'll do a sting test. Bye. Hi, gents, we're back for part two because I have found. My Osma Alan Block. Okay, so it was uh, literally 30 seconds ago that I ran away in fear of finding this. So, one Alan Block. Get it nice and wet. As you do, don't drop it in the sink because it will smash, or it will smash the sink. And just make the face a bit wet and rub the block over. Now, no sting. Not really even on the nick areas. At all. It's nice. A little tiny weeny bit on the Adam's apple, but that's my sensitive spot, which historically has given me grief. But yeah. Leaves you feeling nice and Nice and protected that there so so yeah just wipe off there uh, a bit wet not entirely unexpected given we're wet shaving so the soap was absolutely sublime um, from a, a fairly modest lather I've still got stacks left in the bowl and it's nice and stable smells divine fresh and importantly it's natural um, like I said going back to the tobs it feels really artificial to the nose whereas this just it's just like sticking my head out my front window um, down into the flower bed where I've got some lavender growing and uh, literally just across the other side of the path where I've got my rosemary growing as well um, I think it's possibly why I can pick those two scents out the most because uh, I grow with herbs myself and uh, yeah these are natural wonderful natural scents there's, there's nothing artificial you can detect here at all and it's just I mean, look at the lather it's nice and rich glossy 
and between the fingers, um, just a little bit there, super slick, very slick, and that's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you need from a from a lather. And James, you've got a top soap there, and paired with this lovely, lovely natural scent, it's it's a it's a winner. Um, I mean, look, and I'm bleating on. Um, that that lather is is up there with the best. Um, for for me, I like a lather that's easy to build, and this is. I like a lather that's slick, and this clearly is. And it's got ample cushion, um, which is as in bucket loads. So, yeah, it's fantastic. I'm going to give it a good few goes over the next few days, um, just to sort of get a. a Good range of use. I'm going to try it with different razors, different blades. I'm going to try it with synthetic brushes. Uh, try it with uh, with some bore brushes as well, just to see how it behaves. I know I did the same with the samples, and I do the same with every soap. Because uh, let's face it, some soaps work better with other types of bristle um, than others. They respond differently, and. Uh, it just changes the experience, so I want to get the best experience from this soap as I can. Um, I dare say it probably will be these cabin brushes that give me the best, because um, they're just brilliant all round. And we'll see which razor does the trick, that's give me the best shave with this soap. Um, I've got a choice between the Razor Rock, I've got my Mercure 39C, I've got a couple of shavettes, and uh, I've got my 1972 Gillette Tech which always goes down well. Um, very mild razor, and I suspect will give me a wonderful shave with this soap as well. So, I've bleated on. The uh, alum has done its thing. No more blood. So, I'm just gonna give my face a quick rinse off. There we are. Nicely done. Just pat dry. Ready for the aftershave splash. Now, this is really an unknown territory for me um, from OSP because I've not opened the bottle. It's a lovely little bottle, 100ml, which, as anyone knows, will last an absolute age. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little bottle. Very distinctive branding, and uh, you, you've got to admire the UKWSS logo, it fits perfectly into the OSP styling. So, Nice and uh, secure top that's uh, clearly not been opened before, as we can now hear. Take the lid off there. Yep, yeah, you've got the alcohol hit. Clean the little back bit off. Anyway, let's get a few splashes of this down. Nice little uh, little flow regulator there. Plenty for, a, for an initial try. Get the steam. Alcohol is obvious. Oh, and there's the alcohol wears. The herbs. The herbs come through. Oh, that's just the menthol. Oh, yeah. We'll have a little bit more of that. Because that is a little bit, a little bit nice. Now, oddly, for some alcohol ones, I expect an awful lot of sting, but there is bugger all from this, which is nice. I mean, if you look at the ingredients list on that splash, you've got where are we? Denatured alcohol. Um, something I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Hamam or um, Hamamelis virginiana, virginiana. I suspect that's an aroma, perfume and menthol. All natural by the looks of things. And uh, oh, it's wonderful. That, there's that lovely cooling effect going on right now from the menthol. That's nice. The skin feels nice. It's not tight, it's not dry. Just kind of a natural finish overall. Oh, the menthol really is there. That's really coming through. Right up the schnoz. That's nice. And uh, yeah, the herbs are there in, in, in the soap. The herbs are right there in the foreground. 
with the aftershave splash it's more in the background the menthol is is the dominant thing for me here and uh, that's nice that is really nice it's very fresh it's all, it almost yeah that would be I mean I, I suffer from hay fever but that the, the the menthol I can feel in my eyes just and it's 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 a fresh menthol that's nice I like that a lot James if you're gonna do some more of these um, I think they're gonna sell very well and uh, this particular one it's great love it I say the menthol I didn't expect being the probably the least in, sort of the least populous ingredient in the uh, in the product didn't know how strong that would be um, but clearly it's uh, it's just the right amount just to give you that kick right afterwards um, I, I guess that may balance out the sting from the alcohol who knows um, but yeah the herbs in this instance are very much in the background um, which leaves you open perhaps for an eau de toilette or a cologne aftershave whatever you want to call it um, so it's, it's, it's not going to impact as much um, on any scent you choose to put on afterwards which is a good thing or a bad thing depends how you look at it I like this it's great so yeah, the OSP UK WSS aftershave splash, the uh, soap that decided to try and fall out my hands, two fantastic products, um, I will be using these with much joy over the next few weeks, um, and I, I must, I've got to make a comment on the, the size of the pot, 140 grams in there, um, that's, a, that's a good amount of soap for the money, and in fact it's a very good amount of soap for the money. Um, particularly given the quality of the soap and yeah absolutely cannot knock that in any way shape or form on the first go um, to cover some of the ingredients it, there's there's the water sodium and potassium tallowate tallow soap lovely stuff sodium and potassium stearate um, sodium and potassium castorate castrate mm, depends how you use your soaps really I suppose glycerin sodium and potassium cocrate perfume Sodium and potassium and avocadoate, I presume avocado, um, which uh, would please the wife no end because she loves avocado. Uh, something I'm not going to pretend, pretend I know how to pronounce. Uh, lanolin, kaolin, getting down to the menthol and a few other bits and bobs. Fantastic stuff. So, yeah, basic natural ingredients in both the soap and the splash. Very good stuff, uh, and James, I know you pride yourself on using all natural ingredients in your products, and it clearly shows the quality is there. Um, the shave is brilliant with the soap, um, the post shave with the splash is brilliant as well. So I'm going to uh, disappear now from part two, given that we're about ten and a half minutes in, and I'm waffling away, and you've probably got other things more important to do, like drink coffee. So cheers, chaps. I uh, trust you're all going to have a great day, go grab yourself a brew and uh, I'll see you again soon, bye.